Good morning. My name is Mike Bridgewater, and I'm the Operations Director here at the Church at Mount Gilead. It's Friday, November 27th. Uh, today's a little bit different. It's uh, the day after Thanksgiving, and the office is closed, so I'm, uh, I've had to pre-record this. Um, I hope everyone had a, uh, the best Thanksgiving that they could have yesterday. A few weeks ago, on Fridays, we started working our way through the book of Hebrews, and we're going to continue that today by finishing up chapter 2. To summarize some of the things we've learned in the early parts of chapter 1 and the early part of chapter 2, is that uh, this book was written to the uh, Jewish converts to Christianity uh, in the Roman Empire. They could have been in Jerusalem or anywhere else in, uh, in the Roman Empire. They would have been facing persecution at that time. Um, some of them may have been considering reverting back to Judaism, and some of them had uh, started the practice of angel worship. We also learned that uh, Jesus had a better name, that name being Lord Jesus, and that Jesus um, was not an angel. Um, in the first part of chapter 2, um, we learned about the importance of making Jesus the anchor of our soul to prevent us from drifting away from the great salvation that is ours to inherit. And last week, in the middle part of chapter 2, we learned about the, the fallen state of man and the importance it is to point people to Jesus. So, last week we ended with verse 9, so we'll start there again today with the writer pointing us to Jesus where he says, but we see him for a little while who was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by grace of God he might taste death for everyone. And this next section of Hebrews, your Bible might have a title or a, a subheading that says, The Essential Suffering, or Jesus Briefly Humbled, or Bringing Many Sons to Glory. And the writer picks it up in verse 10, and it says, It was fitting that God for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And here the writer uses some really uh, really interesting words and phrases. And uh, the first word is, is the word pioneer. Some translations might have the word uh, captain or founder, but I really like, I really like that word pioneer. Uh, the imagery of uh, blazing the trail it reminds you of um, Daniel Boone blazing the trail on the wilderness road through the Cumberland Gap. And the other one is perfect through sufferings. And this isn't to suggest that Jesus wasn't perfect beforehand, but the sense here is, is that through the sufferings, he became uh, fit for purpose. And that fit for purpose is to blaze the trail of salvation for his followers to follow. So let's continue on in the text, and it's here in verses 12 and 13 that the writer returns to their custom of citing some Old Testament passages. And it says, For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. So let's go back to um, Jesus' tomb on Sunday morning in John chapter 20, verse 17. And Jesus is talking to Mary Magdalene at this time, and Jesus says to her, he says, He says, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. It was after Jesus had tasted death that he calls us brothers. And I really like the way um, the writer puts a, puts a cap on the end of chapter, chapter 2 with a been there and done that statement, verse 18. He says, because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. So that's, that's like been there, done that. It, was, it is because Jesus was tested. And that testing was he became flesh and blood. 
He faced temptation. He suffered humiliation and death on the cross and was victorious over death. He is able to help us. In the King James Version of the Bible, you'll find a word in verse 18 that, that we don't use today, and it's a succor. And that's to give aid to those in distress. So it's, isn't that a wonderful thing that Jesus is able to give aid to those in distress? So I'll close with John 3.17. That's the verse right after John 3.16. It says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order the world might be saved through him. Have a great Friday. Have a great rest of your Friday. Um, Jeff's going to be wrapping up the Gratitude Adjustment Series uh, this Sunday at 9 or 1030. If you're able, you can join us in the building or you can watch at 9 or 1030. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.